set our affections, our person on a person, place, or thing that causes us to move in the direction that will please God. Amen? If we're setting our affections on things above, we're setting them on the things that please the Lord. And it says, if, Colossians 3, verse 1 says, if you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on the things above, not on the things of the earth. The key word is if. If ye be risen with Christ. Are we risen with Christ? Are, are we truly Christians? Are we his disciples? Amen? Uh, we have to examine ourselves. So one of the four points I pointed out was we have to set ourselves on sanctification. We need to set our affections on how do I sanctify myself? How do I live holy? God said live holy for I am holy. I have to seek and gain understanding of holiness and learn to love it. Amen? Uh, the second thing we was building a house for God. Building a house. He said don't you know that this temple, this body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? He wants to dwell in this vessel. He wants to live here. So you have to learn how to build a house for God. Second, third thing we focused on was we was concerned, you should be concerned with not only your salvation, but the salvation of others. Uh, all of these series, you can find them out on the web. Each, each sermon, I tried to keep them to a minimum of 30 minutes so, if, you know, you wouldn't get bored. But, you know, take time out and look at these things you should be setting your affection on. And here today, we're on the last installment of the series, is setting your affection on how to give unto the Lord. Amen? How do I give unto the Lord? Okay? And seeking these things which are above, and, and, and those things I've just named off, but one of the things that we, we want to shy away from is giving unto the Lord. And I understand that because, you, you know, there's a lot of, lot of crooked people out here that's not doing what they should do with God's money, but I tell you this, there is a new generation of pastors that God is calling that are willing to be servant leaders that are doing the will of the Father that are doing what he say do with the finances and so y'all have to just trust you know because there is a there's a, you know I, I'll tell you this if it's easier to get a loan from the bank than it is to get some some help from your church you in the wrong church amen I'm gonna put that out there so if you want if you're in the wrong ministry Try to get some money. See what happens. Amen. Amen. Tell them you need some help and see what happens. You a tither, tell them you need some help and see what they tell you. Amen. So and what's so funny to me about this series is giving. We learn, we must learn how to give unto God. Not to the church, not to the pastor, but to give unto the Lord. When Moses wrote the law, I found it very interesting that when he first began to teach the children of Israel how to live outside of slavery, outside of the Exodus, his first lesson, the first eight books, seven books of Leviticus dealt with giving. It talked about big, big, uh, presenting an offering for God. Chapter 1 went into a burnt offering. Chapter 2 went to a grain offering. Chapter 3 is about a peace offering. Chapter 4 is about the sin offering. And we're going to stop right there because uh, 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 chapter 5 is about a guilt trespass offering. And uh, chapter 6 was about restitution. Amen? But let me, let me deal with these offerings. God began to teach the children of Israel the first thing he wanted from them was an offering. Oh, so if he, if, why didn't he say, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this? No, he began to teach about giving unto him, making yourself available to him, uh, uh, blessing him with your resources that he has blessed you with. Amen? So it's very important. But I, I this, this sin offering just jumped out the, out, off the page at me, and I had to stay there. And so in Leviticus chapter 4, it says this. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, When a person sins unintentionally against any of the commandments of the Lord that, he, that should not be done, and he violates one of them, 
If an anointed priest sins so as to bring guilt upon on the people, he shall bring for his sin that he committed a bull without blemish to the Lord for a sin offering. <coughs> now, I know we don't have any bulls in the house. Everybody ain't got no bull at home, but what he's talking about is a sin offering. He just taught, he look, because of the sin, there needs to be an offering to me because of what you have done. Amen? And in verse 13, it goes into if the whole congregation sins. Uh, verse 22, it tells about when, and when the leader sins. Or uh, uh, verse 27, it goes in if any one of the common people should sin. He had, each one had a total amount of what they should bring. Uh, the whole congregation was to donate a bull. Uh, and the leader sins, he had to bring a male goat. If one of the common people sinned, they brought a female goat. But all were about to bring God an offering for the trespass. Amen? Amen. If there was guilt or some type of trespass and, uh, uh, that one committed, it says in Leviticus 5, verse 1, it says, When a person sins in the hearing and the, the spoken oath, and he is a witness, whether he saw or knew about the incident, if he does not report it, he bears guilt. Okay, let me let me deal with this one right quick because I love this one. Because this deals with snitching. Because a lot of people say, I ain't no snitch. Okay, well you bear the guilt of it then. Look, I've I, 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 I been teaching prison ministry for almost 19 years now. I've seen people in jail that said, guess what? I'm no snitch. I'm not telling on my family member or whoever it was. And sure enough, give them enough time, that family member will be in there for the same crime later on. So now you doing his time, and he doing his own time, and your time is being wasted behind bars because you didn't snitch. Well, I tell you this, if you man or woman enough to do it, be man and woman enough to own up to it. Don't expect me to go down for you. You did it, own up to it. If you can't own up to it, don't do it. And please don't do it in front of me, because I'm telling, I'd rather deal with you than God, amen? <laughs> I'm afraid of God. I don't want God to deal with me. I'd rather deal with you, amen? amen? So it says this, in the King James Version, it says, and if a soul sin, and hear the voice of swearing, and is a witness whether he hath seen or known of it, if he do not tell it, utter it, then he shall bear his iniquity. I ain't going to jail for now, one of y'all. I ain't doing it. Sorry. You did it, own up to it. That you want to be a man up. That's what I'm talking about. If you can't do the time, don't do the crime. Amen. Amen. So we did, but I'm dealing with this where God is this this is this is near to God's heart. Uh, again, he's coming at us dealing with the offerings, the offering that should be made to him in the beginning. Amen. So he says, uh, and, and Leviticus 5 is continued. He said, if a person touches a ceremony unclean thing, verse 3, if he touch, the human touches, uh, if he touches human uncleanness, or verse 4, it says, or when a person swears by speaking rashly with his lips to do evil or to do good, anything that a man speak rashly by oath, and he did not realize it, but when he realizes it, then he has become guilty of any of these things. So when he becomes guilty of one of these things, he shall confess that he had sinned in that thing, and he shall bring his guilt offering to the Lord for the sin which he has committed. Now most people don't think that's sin. And we don't repent from it. We don't bring ourselves to that place of asking for forgiveness. Amen? So you have to review, you got to read these scriptures so that you will know that you know that you know. Amen. God will bring before you the things he expects of you. And so this was a sin and each time somebody sinned, they were required by the law to bring an offering. Okay. In verse 14, it was talking about offerings of, with restitution. And in Moses, verse 14 says this. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, when a person acts unfaithfully and sins unintentionally in regard up to the holy things of the Lord, this for his restitution offering to the Lord. It also goes on to say he should bring a fifth more or something, but we, we ain't going to get into that. 
Verse Leviticus 6 and 24 says this. And the Lord speak unto Moses, saying, verse 25, speak unto Aaron and his son, saying, This is the law of the sin offering. Now, he goes into the details of why the sin offering is so important. This is the law behind it. He said, in the place where the burnt offering is killed, shall the sin offering be killed before the Lord. It is most holy. I'm going to stop right there. If you own what you have done, it is holy unto God. It had that thing that, you, that was meant for your evil has just turned around for your good because God honors it and the offering in which you give is holy unto God. Amen? It is most holy. So the priest was the only one that was to partake of that offering. Amen? Here we go. Likewise, in Leviticus chapter 7, verse 1, it says this. Likewise, this is the law of the guilt offering. It is most holy. These two offerings, these two sin offerings, I'm, I'm, I'm here today to help you learn how to give to God. If you know that you sin, if you know that you've done something wrong before him, yes, I thank God for Jesus. But tell God about it and give him something. Do something on his behalf. Help somebody. Because it is most holy. God said, a broken heart and a contrite spirit I will not despise. So in that place, if you give unto him, he understands why you're giving. Amen? Now, I, I know you're wondering, why did I come all this? This is Old Testament. Uh, uh, because the church today commits sin in a great way. And we just, you know, so we didn't got so comfortable, we don't even come to the altar and repent anymore. But I want to say this, in Malachi 1 verse 6, God says this, A son honoreth his father, and he is our father, amen? And a servant his master, if then I be a father, where is my honor? If I be a master, where is my fear, saith the Lord of hosts unto you? O priests that despise my name. And ye say, wherein have we despised thy name? In verse, and I, 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 want to, I want you to get out of this that if God is your father, where is his honor? Where is his honor? Amen? It's verse 10. He said, who there among you would shut the doors that you might not kindle fire on my altar in vain? I have no pleasure in you, says the Lord of hosts, nor will I accept an offering from your hand. For from the rising of the sun to its setting, my name will be great among the nations, and every place incense will be offered to my name, and a pure offering. A pure offering. What is a pure offering? An offering that is truly meant for God based on what you have done. It's a pure offering, and it becomes holy. Amen? He said, for my name will be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. But you profane it in that you say the table of the Lord is defiled and is fruit, that is the food of contemptible. You also say, what is the weariness it is? What weariness it is? And you snort at it, says the Lord of hosts. You bring in what is stolen, the lame or the sick, thus you bring an offering. And I'm going to stop right here. He's talking, you have to realize his audience is the priest. The prophet is talking to the priest. He's not talking to the lady. He said, you bring what is stolen. Oh, I'm going to get back to this later on. I want, you, I want you to realize this. He said, you steal from the lame. You bring the lame and the sick. And, you accept, and, and, and should I accept this at your hand, says the Lord? He said, but cursed be the deceiver who has his flock a male and vows and yet sacrifice to the Lord what is blemished. Ah, for I am a great king, says the Lord of hosts, and my name is to be feared among the nations. God wants a pure offering straight from the heart. But I want to say this, aren't you glad we got Jesus? Aren't you glad he came in and paid the price for you and me? He paid the sin offering. He paid the guilt offering. He paid the offering of restitution. Uh, he, Jesus done it all on our behalf. He was that sin offering without spot or blemish that was offered up on our behalf. 
if we would just believe in him. The Lord said the sin offering and the guilt offering was the most holy and it belongs to the priest. The high priest, and we know that Jesus is our ultimate high priest, and it belongs to him. He sitteth at the right hand of the Father, and he's making intercession on our behalf. So every offering you bring in this New Testament, every offering you bring, you should be bringing it to Christ because he sacrificed his life for us. It should be a broken heart with a contrite spirit. We should be in a place of repentance. We should be there to give unto God what belongs to him. Amen? Uh, now, now, I know you said, well, all of these offerings were just Old Testament. But we're in the New Testament, and you are absolutely right. We are so far into the New Testament, I want to tell you something. Over the last year before the turn of the new year from like November oh, forward, the Lord would not let me teach on tithes out of Malachi 3. I couldn't do it. He, he just told me to stop. And then I learned why. Because of it placed people in bondage. God is not trying to ever put his people in bondage that's why he gave us Jesus. Amen. That's why he paid it. God wants us to give unto him what you want him to have. Period. Oh, I, I, well, my church say I need to, look, read the scripture and learn for yourself, okay? Because this is the revelation he gave me. Turn to 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. God's house I'm going to tell you something. <clears throat> God don't need your money. But you need God to have your money. That's what you do. 2 Corinthians 9, chapter, verse 6, it says this. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Bam! Give God what you want. This is the law that applies to your giving in the New Testament. He said, let, verse 7, let every man give according to the purposes of his heart. Purposes in his heart. If it's not in your heart to give a thousand dollars, if it's not in your heart to give a hundred dollars, if it's not in your heart to give five dollars, keep it. Keep it. You're doing your own self harm when you're giving it grudgingly. He said, because let, he said, give it, let every man give according to the purpose is in his heart, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. God is able to make all grace abound towards you so that you always having enough of everything may abound in every good work. As it is written, he has dispersed the broad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness remains forever. Now he who supplies... The seed to the soil supplies bread for your food. Will also multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. So you will be enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which makes us give thanks to God. Amen. Well, if I don't give my tithe, then the house is shut down. It's not your house, it's God's house. God will take care of his house. If that house belongs to him, it'll stay open. Amen. But God wants you to give what's in your heart for you want him to have. Amen. Is, is the tithe the foundation? Yes, it is. 10% is the foundation of giving. But if you don't want to give it, keep it. God wants you to give cheerfully. He wants you to give him what you want him to have. And the God that we serve, verse 10, he said, will also multiply your seed sown. If you don't plant it, it won't be multiplied. God is a God of multiplication. If you give him one dollar, well, you can multiply one dollar by, by a thousand, and it's still going to equal, uh, what, one, uh, whatever the multiplication is, it's going to be a thousand. But one times one is one. He's the God of multiplication. He multiplies 30, 60, some 100 fold. But it's up to you of what you put in the ground and put it in there cheerfully, not grudgingly. Ah, 
he said, if you be risen with Christ. See, I, I, I know I'm not going to be popular among the pastors, but you know, I really, hey, this is the truth. I, I ain't read nothing to you but scripture. So I'm telling you this. Give unto the Lord what you purpose in your heart for him to have. And God will bless you. Amen. I've been giving. I've been consistently giving uh, my tithe and the offering since, since I started in ministry back in 1998-99. And I'll tell you this. I haven't missed a beat. And God has been so consistent in blessing me. Even this year, the largest, I got a lump sum blessing of over six figures at one time. I'm telling you now, if you give to God and give to him willfully, if you give to him consistently, and as time passes, he will continue to multiply the blessings in your life. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Amen. I, don't, <coughs> I don't know too many people that get a six-figure blessing that ain't playing a lot. Amen. You know, I, I'm just going to be real. So, if you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on the things of this earth. We have to set our affections on things above. What am I saying? Even now, after reading these scriptures about Leviticus and knowing that giving is really important to God, but he don't want you to be in bondage giving to him, giving to his house. He wants you to, he wants you to feel free. He wants you to come unto him as he has given his son. He wants you to give unto him. And the offering is more important than a whole lot of stuff because it's the first thing he talks about in Leviticus. That is the book. He talked about that when he got into the sex chapter in Leviticus 18. You know, he, look, this is important. What's important is your giving because it's a part of your worship to him. If you give to him, I'm going to tell you this. I, I, I say this. We, we give an offering, we tip God all the time. But when you give him your tithe, let's say, Lord, I trust you with my money. It says, Lord, I trust your word. Because Jesus told us not one of these words will fall to the ground. All of it, 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 he didn't come to take away the law. He just came to fulfill it. We will fulfill the law by the Spirit, giving graciously and wholeheartedly unto God. If it puts you in bondage, let it go. God wants you to be free. He wants you to be free. Amen. So free yourself today. Free yourself. I'm telling you, but since I have been giving, I, I don't deal with, uh, I, I, I'm going to tell you, I don't deal with all natives going out. I don't deal with all these little problems with cars. Uh, all the little, I don't deal with the stupid stuff I used to do. I remember I got a brand new car and, and I got two flat tires, you know, driving. I, I don't deal with that stuff no more. I don't deal with it. All these little aches and stuff that happen. It's because you are cursed with a curse because you don't give. But give! It's really important to God. And it should be on the top of your list of things to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, not sparingly, not grudgingly. Uh, set a budget up. Purpose in your heart to give to God consistently. And he will multiply your seed that you have placed in the ground. And then what it says, and the, he said, he gives supplies bread of your food and will also multiply your seeds sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. It's twofold purpose in your giving. He will multiply the seeds you have sown and he will increase you in your righteousness. Amen. We need to be increased in our righteousness. So I'm telling you now, set your affections on things above. Set your affections on things of this earth and not on things, uh, not on these, not that set your affections not on the things of earth but on the things above I should know how to set myself apart to sanctify myself I should know that this house belongs to God I should be concerned with the salvation of others and I should always bring an offering to God always I, I'll say this my, my pastor in uh, Hawaii Dr. Anderson told us this Maybe he, te he, teach he teaches on giving. 
And he said, never come to God's house without anything to give him. He would go through the seat cushions. He would go through the couch. He, he wouldn't have the money, but he would go through the couch or whatever. He would find something to put in the offering plate. That tap in the plate ain't going to get you nothing multiplied, okay? You can't multiply, but you'll be late at night. You'll hear tap, tap, tap. It'll come back to you. That's it. Put something in the plate. Find some coins. You ask. You can ask God, I'm coming to your house, and I got nothing. I need something for you to, for I can give unto you. He'll find, you'll find something on the way. If you purpose in your heart to give unto God, he will make a way. Amen? Amen. So I tell you this. Don't ever come to God's house seeking God empty-handed. Because as you can tell here in Leviticus, he requires an offering. God requires an offering, a free will offering, an offering given unto him, not grudgingly, but as you purpose in your heart to give. Man, I hope this blessed you because it's your blessing me. Amen? It is blessing me, man. Because I tell you, it's some people, I, look, the, the church, let's just be real, the church ain't doing what they're supposed to do with the money. So you give unto God and not the church. But I tell you, God is raising up some leaders, some servant leaders that are not afraid to help out God's people when they need help. They're not afraid to do what the word say do. Amen? So I, I thank God for what he's doing. Let us pray right now. Father, we just thank you for your son Jesus. We thank you for what he has done. Father, we thank you that he became the sin offering, the guilt offering, the offering of restitution, God. He became our offering, our healing, oh God. He became our butler. He became the seed that was sown on our behalf so that we might be redeemed, oh God. Father, I thank you for revelation, oh God. I thank you that you're opening the eyes of your people, Father, that they do not have to turn in their paycheck stub to the pastor so they'll see how much they're supposed to give. No, God, I thank you that you're opening up their eyes, that you want them to know to give unto you as you would have them, as they purpose in their heart for you to receive. So I bless you today, God. I honor you today, God. And Father, we sow a seed into your kingdom this day. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless